everyone, Enigma Coin Collector here, and if you've watched my channel for a while now, you know that nickels are my absolute favorite coin to hunt. Don't know why, they just are. I like to call them the poor man's half dollar because they're a lot cheaper than half dollars, but you can still find silver in them. Anyway, with the pandemic going on, I haven't been able to get any new boxes, so I'm limited to what I have in reserve, and it's been a long time since I've hunted a nickel box, and I've got the urge today, so... I'm going to crack into one of my few remaining nickel boxes that I got a few months ago, and we're going to hunt it today. And I'm super excited about it. It's from Bank of America, and there are a lot of older Jefferson coins on the top here. So that gives me hope that we're going to find something. I'll be setting aside all 30s, 40s, and 50s nickels. We're also going to be looking for Buffalo nickels, Silver War nickels, key dates, semi-key dates, V nickels. That would be awesome. Forns, O9s, and we're going to add it all up at the end. We're going to give each one the point values that we've discussed in previous videos, and we'll see how this box scores. So, that pretty much covers everything. Let's get started. I'm really excited to do this box. It's been a while, and let's just have some fun, hunt some nickels, and hopefully we have some good finds. I'll bring you in on the first one. Well, I was getting a little nervous. We got to roll eight without finding anything. But look what just popped out. That is a buffalo nickel. That is nice. Really, really nice seeing that find early on. Decent detail. No mint mark. 1937, and it's got a little hole there. It's not through, though. It just almost is. You can see right where the drill almost broke through. Uh, but that is a really cool find. Now, I will take it. Great date on there. 1937 Buffalo Nickel in the box. That gets us on the board early with a really cool find. Hopefully there's more in this box. And roll number 10 has our first 50s of the hunt. This is a 1952 out of Philly. Roll 11, and we've got a 1954 out of Denver to add to the board, a second from the 50s. We're on roll 12, and we finally have our first 40s of the box. It's a 1941 minted in Philadelphia. Add it to the board. Keep on going. Here at the end of that same roll, we've got another one, and it's a 59 this time. And that one is from... Denver. Roll 15, we've got our fourth 50s of the box, and it's a 1953 in rough shape, but it's out of Denver. Roll number 18, and we've got a 1948. Can we get an S for a semi-key date? No, just the Denver. Thought that was an S for a second, but still a nice find. It's going to go on the board and gets us... Moving forward. Number 19 is going to yield another 50s, and this one is a 53 minted in Denver. Roll 20. I just opened roll 20, and I already see three finds, so let me pull them out for you. We have here a 1959 Denver, and a few coins later, a 1952 Philadelphia. And this one, a 40s, a 46, one year off silver, minted in Philadelphia. Three finds in that one roll, pretty nice. Roll number 21, 22. Roll number 22, and we've got another 50s, and this one is another 53. This needs to be the box of the 53s, minted in Philadelphia. Same roll. We've got a 50s now. 1958 minted in Denver. Roll 24 is going to give us 1956 out of Denver. Third coin in on roll 25. We're halfway through. Our fourth 40s of the box. Another 46. This one from Philadelphia. Still looking for the silver. Roll 27, and check out this dark coin, and it's a 40s, not a silver. Kind of has that silver look to it. I'm pretty sure that's got to be postman damage based off of how that looks. 
A lot of scuffing here. I don't think that's a big grease strike. That is a 41 Philly that has seen better days. But we'll add it to the board. See if we can find more. Roll number 30. We've got a 1954 that's worn. It's minted from Philadelphia. Same roll, and we've got a 40s, a 1940. To be exact, decent detail. Minted in Philadelphia. Roll 31, another 50s. This is our 12th of the box, I believe. That's a 1954 from Denver. Roll 32, and we've got a foreign. 95, Canadian. Add it to the board. I also found this little grease strike, I believe. I might throw it back. Just thought it'd be cool. Nothing on this side. Definitely above and below the Monticello, you can see the grease striations. I don't know, thought it was cool. Let's keep on going. Roll 36, another 40s. A toasty 1941 out of Denver. Okay. Okay, so I showed you uh, the colorized version of uh, Jefferson there, and we're finishing up roll 37, and I missed it. It's so worn. But check it out. Look at this coin. It is a war nickel. 1943, and I missed it by the edge. Which isn't too bad, but look at this side. It is gone. You can barely make out that P right above the dome of the Monticello. See it right there. That is a silver war nickel in the box, but man, is it toasty. Now, we are going to check for the doubled I and the three over, I'm sorry, the two over the three, but I'm probably not going to be able to see anything. There might just be enough. I'll bring it back if it is that, but it's going to be super tough to see that. But we found a silver war nickel in the box. That really makes things nice. A buffalo and a silver, even though it is totally smooth, I will take it. That is silver, and it's going to go right there. Roll 38, and we've got a 1949 in decent shape. Minute in Philadelphia. Same roll, and we've got another 50s, a 54 out of Denver. Goes there. Roll 41 was an ender, and it is a 1957 out of Denver. Roll 43, and we're not done yet. This is, I think, number 9 from the 40s, a 1941 minted in Philadelphia. Just open roll 44. We could have another silver war nickel here. I'm going to film this live. This would be great. Yes! <laughs> Caught that one on live, and it's another 1943 out of Philly. Nice. So two silver war nickels in this box. I will check it for the doubled eye. This one's in a lot better shape and the two over three in the date. But we've got our second silver war nickel of the box. Nice. Same roll as that second silver. We've got a 1954 out of Denver to add to the collection. A few coins later and we've got another find. A really nice 1958. Minute in Philadelphia. Very cool. Roll 45, we've got another 40s. It's chewed up. That's a 1941. Minted in Philly. Just unwrapped roll 46, and I see this date poking up at me. And this is a 1942. 42 is a transition year, and some of them were in nickel, some of them were in silver. And this does not look like a silver or nickel, but I thought I'd film it live. It's not, uh, but it's a 42P non-silver war nickel, and that still counts as a fine, and that goes on the board. 
we'll put these silver up here because they're a little bit more special. There we go. Same roll, another find, a 58. Minted in Denver. Same roll and we have our first 30s Jefferson of the box. And this is a 39. Can we get a key date? I don't think so. I don't think that gunk is covering up the mint mark. I'll clean it off, but uh, that would have been awesome to get my first key date nickel coin roll hunting. But still 30s, that counts for some points, and we'll add it to the board. Got another find here near the end of the roll. It's a 1957 out of Denver. Roll 49 is going to give us another find. 1947 out of Denver. Roll 50 has this really cool toner. Thought I'd open it live just in case we get lucky. If there's anything in the roll, a war nickel, a buffalo. Lay it out for you. Wow. Roll 50. Filmed it live. Wasn't a fluke. Buffalo. Boom. <laughs> Glad I filmed that clip. Wow. No mint mark. No date. They do have a date. I will... Probably try to clean that up. If I can't get a good date on it, I will nick a date it because I got to know. Um, dateless buffalo nickels aren't worth much more than nick a dated buffalo nickels. If they're a good date anyway, and we couldn't sell it as a good date buffalo nickel because we don't know what it is. So I don't think there's much risk in doing it to this one. But wow, that was cool to see that uh, uh, looking up at us. Our second buffalo of the box. Let me just scoot through here real quick. And I don't see anything else. I will search through the rest of this and check out that Buffalo nickel and we might have to use some Nicodate, but caught it live. That is awesome. Nicodate has been applied and removed. We've got a date of 1924. Nice, a 20s nickel. No mint mark. Would have been a semi-key date if there was an S. Would have been nice. Don't have one of those. But just a 24P. Still a really awesome find. And you know what? That was an awesome box. Check out all these finds. Two Silver Wars, two Buffaloes, and a bunch of uh, 40s, 50s, and even a 30s, uh, Jefferson. You know, if I had a nickel... For every 1964 that looked old, worn, and a potential 40s or 50s from this box, I'd probably have another half box to hunt. There were so many 60s that were fooling me, thinking, here it is, another 50s or 40s out of the board, wasn't it? So definitely an interesting box. I'm going to go ahead and plug this into the score sheet, and we'll see how the box scored, and I'll bring you in for the recap. And here's the recap. We had, no V nickels, but two Buffaloes, two Silvers, a one foreign, one from the 40s, 12 from the 40s, 18 from the 50s for a total of 64 and a half points, well above my average. And that's really good to see because that box was pretty cold in the beginning and that actually is one of my better boxes. So really cool to see that. The finds of the box for sure are gonna be these two Buffaloes. We had the 1924. And a 1937 from Philly. And then the two silver war nickels. Both 43s, both from Philly. Really cool. Here's a recap of the other finds. You can take a look. Of the 30, the 40s, and the 50s. I did go through these and check them for all of the areas and varieties. Don't have any of them. I also found this decorated in 2012p my first 2020 nickel found in the wild that's cool and then that grease strike so 
a really fun and exciting box. I love hunting nickels. I hope that the banks can get everything sorted out and we can start picking up boxes again because I only have two more left. And like I said, this is my favorite coin to hunt and I want to keep doing it. So hopefully things get better soon. If you like this video and want to see more like it, go ahead and click subscribe. I'd appreciate a thumbs up. Go ahead and tell your friends and family about this channel and get them watching as well. And remember, it's always a mystery until you crack open those rolls and you find out what is inside. Thanks for watching, everyone. Take care.